Oh my God, you guys. I discovered the people on the internet are doing this thing called the 24 books to read in 2024 reading challenge. And it's essentially just a great way to make a physical TBR list to reduce the amount of books that you own, hopefully, or that you own and have not read. And so I'm like, yeah, I probably need to do that. <laughs> Things have gotten out of control. I probably need to like strategize this year on what books are my priority. Yes, I'm gonna share with you what books I picked, but more importantly, I'm gonna talk about a few of the ways I like chose the books that I did in case you're interested in doing the same. I'm just gonna quickly run through the 24 books so we're not here all day. I don't know what the other booktubers are doing because all of their like uh, thumbnails clearly show them not holding 24 books, so okay. Also, if there's a particular book I mentioned that I'm wanting to read this year that you want a review of from me, uh, let me know. No, down below. Um, that helps me out. <laughs> so let's get into it. So there's five categories of how I chose the books that I did. And I think this is helpful for me and maybe helpful for you guys if you're going to do this challenge because it gives you a chance of reading some books that you've been meaning to but like haven't had at the forefront of your mind and that's how it keeps like getting missed each year. The other thing is I really love about this TBR is that you dig through the books that you currently have so you find what sparks joy and what doesn't so you might actually end up getting rid of a few books you're like oh yeah like I forgot I even had that I'm not interested or I'm really freaking interested and now I remember I have it and I know why I want to read it and I can put it at the front of the list. So my five categories are my big behemoths, my fat boy books, slash my uh, white whale of of uh, triumph if I succeed, my everyone keeps talking about these books and saying good things so I want to read them books, my classics, and then my rereads are underneath that, and then books that I think I'm gonna like but for different reasons I'm a little bit anxious to dive into. So let's go! All three of my fat boys are college books. Surprise, surprise. I read several books in each of these and liked them, which is why I kept them. But they're they're just so big and chunky. They don't make for like easy light reading. I think in my head in the past, I was like obsessed with the idea of just reading it, you know, cover to cover. I think I just need to have these guys somewhere easy for me to pick up, read a short story, put it down instead of because they're so big, um, they tend to be on <laughs> on the bottom of my bookshelf, and so that makes it even harder for me to grab them. Uh, and just just a short story at a time, instead of just feeling like I need to power through it. That's my plan on these guys. Ooh. Then we have the ones that I've heard good things about, and you know, so I found them really cheap in the past, and so that's why I own them. But now it's time to read them. Darn it! So we have the White Album by Joan Didion or good things. I, I don't even know what this book's about. <laughs> uh, Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I read 1Q84 last year. It, it's a, a strange book, so now I'm curious but also worried about this one. <laughs> the Tattooist of Auschwitz. It's actually pretty wild I haven't read this already. Um, for those who know me, when I was in fifth grade I kind of went down the rabbit hole of like all of Holocaust literature, so I'm kind of a weirdo about that. So th this is this this is a long time coming. Braiding sweet grass, indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants. Heard such good things about this, and uh, excited to jump into it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I've had this on my shelf for several years. I need to read it if it can help me with things. It can only help me if I've read it, <laughs> not just being in close proximity to me. Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zimmer. You might recognize a lot of these books because I mean, they keep popping up over and over again if you're a book lover. And then lastly, How to Build a Girl by Catelyn Moran. Everyone, especially online, sings the praises of her and this book. So I need, I need to know. I have a few classics. I'm not going too classic crazy because like, come on. I, <laughs> I like them and I want to get to them, but moderation's key. But 
some big ones that I want to knock off are iRobot by Isaac Asimov. And I have this cool little uh, mass paperback cover edition. The Tale of Genji by Lady Murasaki. Again, dope ass mass market, mark pa mass market paperback cover. Um, hopefully you can see that with a shine shine. If not, you know, it's traditional, like Japanese style art, which is neato. And then The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Boom, bada bing. I feel like I'm going through this really fast. <laughs> it's because of the video editing. Like, I guys, I don't think you appreciate. It's, it's a wild world behind the scenes of getting this from me to you. So you're welcome. These are my rereads. Um, in a world of capitalism and hustle culture and productivity. It doesn't feel very productive to reread books. So even though I've been wanting to read these and I've had a hankering to reread, I have not. So I want to make it more of a priority this year. Got it, future Kelly. Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider. Really love this book. Read it, oh God knows how many years ago. I can remember. But anyway, main character is about to be executed for murder, but then she's given the choice to become the food taster for, uh, I think it's the like emperor or something like that. Um, but in order to become the food tester, taster, she has to become trained on all of the poisons so that with like her last breath, she can be like, yo, it's this poison. So that also means that she has to get mild doses of each poison so that she has personal experience and knows exactly what it will feel like, um, and she might not survive that. So yeah, it was, it was a dope book. I really liked it. Then we have Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I've been, yeah, like, I feel like winter's also a good time for rereads, and it's like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not going outside. Ew. Yeah, so it's a fat boy to fat boy reread. Yeah, I want to see if I, if, if it's just as good on the reread. And I think that's the other thing too with rereads that hold me back, is that I'm nervous it won't. And it's so sad for something that used to be your favorite to not jive as well anymore. And it's just like, mm. so, but it's fine. It's fine. 1984 by George Orwell. I read this five million years ago in high school on my own, not for class. <laughs> Nerd. And hated it. <laughs> but as a teenager, I also had no patience for classics that were like mega dense, like were too good for paragraph breaks, just beefy text and like info dumping. So I want to give it another shot. And then lastly, Enchantment by Orson Scott Card, another book I read in high school that I've been thinking about and wanting to reread. So my last section are books that for different reasons I've kind of subconsciously put off because I want to read them. Like that's why I have them. And at the same time, I've been at a distance or like covertly decided to read something else instead of these guys. So I want to prioritize them. No One Crosses the Wolf by Lisa Nicoladakis, who actually, by the by, was one of my college professors. This is a memoir. I know it's going to be bomb, but I also know because of the subject material, it's going to be really fucking sad. So there's been times where I wanted to read it, but it wasn't right headspace for it. So that's what makes reading this one a little bit tricky. But this year I'm going to do it. Shadow Fires by Dean Koontz. So this isn't my normal kind of reading book, but my friend Sunny was lovely enough to gift this to me. And it's uh, one of their fave authors and one of their fave books, I think. And so that always makes me a bit nervous. Cause I'm like, oh, I really want to like the books my friends like, even though I'm sure they'd be fine and wouldn't care, but it just gets into your head. Then um, Harlan Ellison from The Land of Fear. So this is a short story collection that is really short. Dope cover again. He is the hardest dude to find his works on. I read one of his short stories back in college in a short story collection and have tried to track down other stuff by him and then proceeded to buy it and then not read it. So I need to change that. Then The Best of Saki by Saki. <laughs> And funny enough, this is a British dude. I have no idea why he decided to give himself like a Japanese uh, sounding name. Kind of not PC for today's standards, but what can you do? I read a short story collection by him many moons ago and really liked it. So I want to read this. I, I like his work. I want to read more of it. Come on, Kelly. And now we have three more books to go. Oh my goodness. 24 books. It's a lot. Like 
it didn't seem like it mentally, but then when I was putting this collection together, I'm like, hot, this is a this is a huge stack of books I'm committing to read, so you're gonna have to hold me accountable. A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. So I got this brand new on vacation, which is fine. I don't tend to buy things brand new, but by God, if I keep this on my shelf for ages, when it's brand spanking new, come on. I, I need to read this. <laughs> Like, don't... Okay. Ah, the stack is... The precarious stack is precarious. Stay. Colette, the complete Claudine, which is what she's most famous for, and what her husband tried to rip off is his. Wow. I wish that wasn't as common as it was, but uh, I read some... A, another short story collection by her. I, like, the, the stories were good, but I was, like, blown away by the freaking introduction that just talked about Colette and her life and how, like, what a cool-ass chick she was. And so I'm like, okay, I need to go in. I'm gonna, like, read some more about Colette. Bought this <laughs> and then didn't read it. And part of it, again, it's a chunker. Part of it, I'm afraid I won't like it as much. Why do I do this to myself? I don't know. Argue the same way. Please, Please tell me I'm not the only one. And then lastly, Banana Rose by Natalie Goldberg. I love me, Natalie Goldberg. She is awesome. I have never read her fiction before. I've read almost all of her nonfiction. I think this is her only novel. And then plot twist for you guys, I'm scared I might not like it. <laughs> so I want to like it so much because I love Natalie. So um, yeah, those are my 24 books. I don't know if that was exciting for you at all, but maybe it got you percolating and thinking about what books you want to prioritize. It doesn't have to be 24. It could be five. But I love this idea of taking a look at what you already own, guys, and like really diving into joy and the books that you bought because they meant something to you. I think that's just a great energy to go into 2024 with. So don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you're doing this year with your TBR. Are you doing this reading challenge? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below and I'll see you soon.